today we will be studying about Coursera method. Now this method is somewhat uh, similar to the Jacobi's method, but um, a few difference in the way we do the iterations. Uh, the Jacobi's method, I think it was um, much simpler, but um, in a Coursera method. Mm, now let's see the working rule, and then you will understand what the difference is. Uh, so in the working rule, the first two steps, uh, let me say the first two steps uh, are almost the same as that of the Jacobi's method. So here now let's assume a system of uh, linear equations. Now your linear equations are given as follows. Then there are three conditions that is to be checked. Mm, these are the three conditions. Now as I said before in the Jacobi's method also, what I said was the uh, coefficient of the first equation, uh, like first in the coefficient, uh, the coefficient of the first equation, that is the coefficient of x, uh, a1 uh, should be greater than the sum of b1 and c1. And again, uh, similarly, uh, b2 should be greater than the sum of a2 and c2 and c3 should be greater than a3 and the sum of a3 and uh, b3. So this is these are the conditions. You, so you have to check the conditions. If the conditions are okay, then you can carry out the iterations. So again, we are going to solve for x, y, and z. So my x is equal to, which is same as that, uh, that what we have done in the Jacobi's method, y and z. I hope by now you know how you got the x, y, and z. If you don't remember please go and check the previous video and then what is the next step that you have to do yeah the iteration start now when the iteration start uh, starts um, on the Jacobi's method what we did was we assigned the values uh, 0 for uh, we assigned 0 for y z and x and we found out what x1 is that is uh, the first approximate value okay now in the Jacobi's method, it was very easy. Uh, you have to find out just one. Uh, you you will find out x, y, and z in one shot. But here, what you are going to do is, as soon as you find x one, what you are going to do is in the second equation, you are going to replace this x one, not x is equal to zero. Okay. In the Jacobi's method, what you did was you gave this x is equal to zero in your second equation, but um, here in this case the second equation what you are going to do is you are going to put this x1 in the second equation now this might be a bit confusing right now because it is a working rule when it comes to a problem you will understand it more but let's first finish the working rule now after that like you put the x1 in your equation uh, 2 and you will put this z is equal to 0 in the equation 2 and you will find out y is equal to y1. Now I hope some of you can guess what will be my next move. Yeah, you have to put x1 and y1 in equation 3 okay, to find out your z1. So this is what we are going to do in a Gauss-Seidel method. Now whatever values we get, we will make use of it okay, from that point itself. We don't, uh, you know, we don't let them rest for a while and make use of it in the next iteration. That was Jacobi's method. Now, in gauss seidel method, what we do is, as soon as you get a value, you make use of it. Okay. Now, this is the first iteration. And when the first iteration gets over, you have x1, y1, and your z1 with you. Now, that's not enough. You have to move on to your second iteration. Now, in the second iteration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put y1 and z1 in equation 1. Now, I hope you all know what is equation 1. I have marked it earlier, so I'm not going to write it over here. By this time, it should be in your notebook. Okay, now, and you have to find out the x2. That is the second approximate value. Fine. So, that is why I gave it a green color. Then, uh, using x2, that is just using second approximate value of x and the first approximate value of z, in equation 2, you have to find out y2. Okay, as I said, this is a bit confusing for some of you right now. Don't worry, we will move on to our problem and you will understand it in a better way. Then, put x2 and y2 in equation 3 and find out 
z2 okay so right now you have got the values x2 y2 and z2 from the second iteration and now this continues uh, or you can repeat these kind of iterations till you get a required approximate solution for x y and z okay now let's move on to a problem so that it will be more interesting now our problem is that you have to solve um, these equations using gauss seidel method now you have a system of equation like this now from this uh, what is the first thing that you have to do you have to find out whether the conditions are satisfied so i'm not going to write it anymore over here now you all know the conditions how to check the condition how how do you check that yeah you have to consider the coefficient of x now here it is 83 83 is it greater than the sum of the other two coefficients yes now what about 52 yes what about 29 yes okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out my x from the first equation so th that I have marked it as equation 1 y from the second equation and z from the third equation okay fine now my iteration begins so the first iteration as I said first we will assign a 0 for all y z and x and we will put that in equation 1 and then I get uh, when I put a uh, y and z is equal to 0 in equation 1 I get my x1 okay now what I have to do is okay one th I will place my equations over here so that it would be easy for you okay now when I put the uh, y and z as 0 in equation 1 I get 95 divided by 83 is that right yeah so my value is what 1.145 for x at this moment and I give it a give it a notation that is x1 okay the value of x in the first iteration fine so this is my first approximate value then what I'm going to do I'm going to make use of this value in equation 2 that is in this equation okay now in this equation I'm going to see I'm not going to put 0 over here unlike what we did in uh, Jacobi's method now I'm going to make use of x1 over here okay so when I put the value 1.145 over here and then I don't have uh, the approximate first uh, approximate value of z I only have z is equal to 0 fine you can put that value over here okay and you can find out y now y I get it as 1.846 and what will you do next now you have x1 and y1 right now make use of it make use of it put these values in the third equation now when you put the values in the third equation what will you get you will get the first approximate value of z what is it 1.821 so finally you get x1 is equal to 1.145 y1 is equal to 1.846 and z1 is equal to 1.821 fine now I'm moving on to the second iteration now this is the second iteration so in the second iteration what I'm going to do is now I have y1 and z1 with me so I'm going to put that in the first equation let me first display the equations over here so that you get a better idea okay now y1 and z1 is uh, is uh, substituted in the first equation so that I get x now my x is equal to 0 0.988 and this is what x2 what is x2 the value of x in the second iteration right now make use of this green uh, value okay now put x2 is equal to 0 0.988 and z1 z1 you already have in what in your second equation then you will get the value of y2 okay now what you have to do now you have x2 and y2 with you look at equation 3 there is x and y so put x2 over here and y2 over here the values of x2 and y2 substitute it find out what is z2 now you get z2, z2 as 1.956 okay now this is iteration 2 now these are the values that you get finally in the iteration 2 similarly you have to do iteration 3 iteration 4 so in iteration 3 what you get is 
in the similar manner so sorry this is not a decimal point it is actually 1.051 okay so x3 is 1.051 y3 is 1.344 z3 is 1.969 and in the fourth iteration you get x4 as 1.051 y4 as 1.344 and z4 as 1.969 so you can actually stop at here why you stop at here yeah because the uh, values uh, before the uh, fourth iteration I mean the values of third and fourth iteration came same right the decimal points uh, are also same three for the three places now now this is a point where you have to stop your iteration okay and okay so I hope you got an uh, idea when and where to stop your iteration okay so the values of x y and z for this system of equation for your problem it is 1.051 the value of x and the value of y is 1.344 and the value of z is 1.969 so i hope you have understood the um, method of cos serial and uh, yes and and with that, we are coming to an end of uh, semester 5, the paper numerical methods. Uh, thank you for all your cooperation. And thank you so much for listening patiently in my class and watching all my videos. Thank you.